Hello, hello everyone. Um, so happy to be here today. As many of you already know myself, my name is, my name is Andrea Carcano. I'm uh, one of the founder of, uh, of Nozomi Networks. And uh, um, we decide today to you know, start to do this, uh, this, uh, this chat, let me say, for sharing some of the work that we're doing in this new context of, uh, of COVID-19. And, uh, and um, so inside Nozomi, as many, many of you already know, we have the philosophy that it's, it's important to work as a team. And, and right now we feel that is, you know, is important that our, our team is the war that is important to work all together uh, in order to really, um, you know, try to help everyone in this new challenge that we have, uh, we have to face. So I'm very happy today to have here um, two of the most smart people that I ever met in my career in terms of cybersecurity. Um, so uh, we have uh, here, I have with me Chris, and, uh, and then we have, uh, we have Alessandro. Uh, so Alessandro has a deep expertise on, uh, on uh, reverse engineering related to, to malware. And Chris have a long, long term experience in cybersecurity um you know covering different aspects of, uh, of of cyber security and is uh, is a pleasure for me guys be with with you today discussing uh, such an important topic Likewise. Ciao, Chris. Ciao, Ale. Ciao. so if can maybe i can introduce uh, a bit the team so to keep on with the introduction i'm alessandro di pinto and uh, i lead uh, the security research team uh, our most important uh, mission is to keep uh, the customer safe and the whole community updated on what's going on in the security field to achieve that um, that results uh, we work uh, in several different directions the main ones uh, are uh, first of all providing uh, indicators information detections uh, using our uh, threat intelligence service uh, to both the customer and the community using our, our blog posts, uh, enhancing uh, the techniques uh, used to detect new malware and new, and new attacks. We also work uh, with the community with the uh, cutting yeah. edge uh, researches, sharing the, the knowledge, for example, publishing uh, white papers, uh, advisories, uh, and uh, attending conferences uh, as the speakers so that's yeah. a quick introduction about the team that's that's great ali that's great and uh chris um you know Likewise. great to be here chatting with you today likewise thank you very much for having us um and this subject matter is very important i know not just to our customers but to our families and our community as well and first i wanted to thank you for your leadership role in all this i think it was a great step in our company to challenge everyone to find a way to help the community it wasn't find a way to do business it, it wasn't find a way to make a new product or sell something it was how do we help the world and how do we help our community and i really liked that challenge and it was awesome to participate in the team to get everything together so i'm really excited about the stuff that we're going to share today with the community and what we came up with as a company to contribute and help out. Yeah, no, that's uh, I think that's is great, and uh, I think um, one of one of the beautiful things about uh, what is happening right now in the world is that um, it, it, I I see that everyone is trying to is trying to help, right? I feel I feel probably for the first time in my life that everyone is trying to really do his own part, uh, you know, to try to uh, um, help the world. To pass well these new challenges that we have, and uh, and of course every one of us has different role, and I think it's important to use our skill in the service of the community. So that's why um, today we're excited to share something, but also to start a more deeper collaboration with many of you. We're already collaborating with many of you, but we would like to do more because we strongly believe that by collaborating together we can really help the community. And it doesn't really matter about which company we are from on, or or um you know who is um who is the company behind us but it's really important to work together for facing you know some of the new challenge that that we have so talking about the the landscape uh, uh, you know chris i i spent a good amount of time on the phone with uh professional in the field on the customer side the people 
in company that are doing same things that Ozami is doing and other company in cybersecurity. And one of, one of the challenge and one of the things that I noticed in the change on the landscape, but I want to get your feedback about you know, what's happening from the cybersecurity perspective is that um, many customers right now, especially monitored and critical infrastructure, they went to uh, you know, completely work uh, with people going on site to have lots of people working remotely. So there is some, some stuff that changed because we have to, but that's have some implication on our day by day and, and on the cybersecurity landscape. So what, what's your, your opinion? Yeah, undoubtedly, um, there's a lot of change happening. Um, it's like you just brought up the remote access piece of it. There's also the challenge that um, companies are faced with in trying to find ways to remote out their stuff. How do we get operations that used to be done inside handled outside in a safe way? It's also the fact that the attackers are also adapting their methods. Bad guys are always finding the weakest link. They're finding ways to exploit that. I know that Ali's going to cover some of those, but um, even outside of cybersecurity world, you know that they're uh, they they busted in Kentucky a fake DNA, uh, sorry, a fake COVID-19 testing site. They were stealing people's DNA, personal information, and two hundred and forty dollars set up a tent yeah. with everything. So if they're willing to go to that extent, imagine what they're willing to do online from overseas. And some of these gangs have promised not to attack medical um, facilities and hospitals while the pandemic is happening. But at the same time, they're still doing it. And they're, for example, they just hit a company that's um, recently gone through all the Ebola testing and they're gonna be a part of the COVID-19 response and they got hit by malware and shut down. So at a time like this, it's important that not only do we recognize the change that organizations are going through, to adopt this new like remote out of our tasks, but also keep in mind that the attackers are, are just waiting for opportunities and they're looking for the weakest link. A lot of times that might be the employees um, or the people receiving emails and people that might be tricked into visiting infected websites and perhaps looking at the fake Chris, COVID tracking apps and things like sorry, that. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but is this topic mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's very interesting uh, and uh, and reminds me of a conversation that I had a few days ago on on one of, one of my best friend is is uh, right now on the front line, you know, is is a medical doctor and is um, trying to help people from a different perspective than us, as we were saying before. Everyone is using this skill, so lots of respect to what he's doing. And he was telling me, you know, some of the challenge that he has, and 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 at some point he asked me a question that uh, you know, for me that I'm part of the cybersecurity was kind of a surprising, but also, from his perspective, he, he was uh, really surprised about my initial answer, and I want to get your take, Alan and Chris. And his question was, um, is, there, is the attackers really are using what is happening on the COVID-19 for basically took advantage and perform attackers, uh, att uh, perform a specific attack around that? So, um, uh, Alan and Chris, both of you, so are we seeing these, uh, these used by, by attackers? So it's uh, do we have any indication that that's is happening or 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 not really? Ali, do you, do Absolutely. You I'll, sure. I'll let, sorry, Ali, please. That, that, you have more correct. details. In according with the, our investigation, um, attackers are using a lot of different techniques. None of them is uh, really new, but uh, what is important in my in my opinion is the trend. So they are uh, exploiting. Uh, this uh, fear that uh, all the people have all around the world, they need to, to have confirmations, uh, to have uh, news, uh, to have uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, information around the, the problem. So the attackers are uh, using a lot uh, the spread phishing uh, technique to try to trick uh, individuals opening uh, malicious emails, uh, um, downloading uh, and executing inside the system uh, attachments uh, inside these uh, emails. But also we observed another uh, really interesting technique uh, that is the masquerading uh, malware, malicious code uh, inside uh, uh, normal, uh, normal applications uh, like uh, VPN clients uh, or uh, for example, uh, Zoom client. Uh, 
used to create conference calls. That is uh, really interesting because uh, it's like uh, the attackers are adapting the techniques uh, to the topic. So they are thinking what can be really useful for them uh, to breach uh, the, the users uh, and to exploit this, uh, this sphere. Yeah, that's is that's is crazy, and uh, and um, uh, also very curious to know what what Chris you're thinking. But you, you know, more I thinking about that, more I believe that you, you know, unfortunately, even if we are in a challenging time, there is people taking advantage of that. Even and uh, and even more the fact that uh, as as Chris you mentioned at the beginning, we have to many of us right inside Nozomi, in the company that are managing critical infrastructure and so on we have unfortunately to change some of the behavior that we had before and that is even opening up on on new potential risk um yeah absolutely yeah and it's not even just the um stuff that ali mentioned around the virus itself and the fear that is created with that it's the mitigation as well is also being hijacked and taken advantage of for example some of the phishing subject lines don't even have anything to do with the virus specifically they have to do with like pre-registering for ventilators or get your direct deposit by signing up here or you know anything with like ach debit or anything financial coming through email is going to be somewhat related to this because people are looking for not just virus information but also um, financial information and how to access work remotely and um, there's a lot of information passed around in channels that aren't normally being used and um, yeah they're absolutely taking advantage of a variety of aspects of this yeah yeah I, so I think absolutely. actually um, this is a great spot for what our first poll question don't you think um, it, should we kick that off uh, if you don't mind Sandy we yeah. Um, would love it if people could take a moment just to answer this quick question. Do you see a change in any malicious activity this month? And we're going to continue the podcast while you guys answer this question. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, that's great. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the principle for us today is just, uh, you know, start to have a, a closer collaboration. And we mentioned at the beginning. So, we, you know, we any any information that we can start to get here, but you know, um, uh, after this one, to start to collaborate and eventually sharing with you and 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 you sharing with us some of the of the stuff that you're seeing there, because we truly believe that uh, in these new circumstances, it's really important to to work together. And uh, because of that, um, we mentioned at the beginning um, uh, about the fact that uh, you know we're trying to to do stuff. That are going to help to solve some of these challenges, and uh, and when I say we are, I say we are as as you know individual contributors, and of course using the resources that Nozami gave us to to try to help the community and sharing everything with uh, uh, with the rest of the community. So um, it, it, you know, it would be great to start to share some of some of the stuff that we, that we are doing, and uh, maybe Chris, if you want to start, and then Ale will be absolutely great to to know. Um, you know, what we're trying to do uh, in order to help everyone in these new challenges. Absolutely. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, your directive to the company was find a way to help. And that went across all of our units from marketing to our R&D to Ali's team to our uh, even the sales engineers and sales team found ways to work with the community a little bit better. And some of the things that we came up with. Um, we've got a web page together that highlights all of this. So if you don't catch it all now, um, you have an opportunity to catch it later. So one of the things is that we have some threat intelligence stuff that um, Ali's going to cover. We also have another webinar coming up that's going to cover just remote access. We have some new security tools that Ali's going to cover as well. We have um, our community edition, which is for folks that aren't customers of ours that are looking to begin their journey into um, understanding and protecting their environments. Um, they can do so for free using our community edition and get some immediate benefits to helping um, this whole situation that we're dealing with. Um, and then we also have some other um, communications and thought leadership type stuff. So I'm going to pass the mic to Ali here because he's really got the exciting meet here. And um, I think that uh, everyone's going to benefit from what he's about to, to share with us. Yeah, sure. We created a dedicated web page 
inside our uh, website uh, to inform the whole community about uh, important uh, updates about COVID-19 attacks and also to publish uh, some indicator that can be really helpful uh, to detect some of these threats. At the moment, uh, we added uh, two Yara rules uh, to detect uh, the ransomware called the coronavirus and also um, another uh, Yara rule to detect uh, the informer uh, info stealer. That are actually are two of uh, the threats uh, we, we saw in the wild. Also, we add uh, two uh, multiple uh, detections uh, for, uh, for network that can be easily consumable uh, by most of the existing uh, security products. So I think it is really important for the community to use that uh, to detect uh, connection uh, to those, uh, those websites. So at the moment, uh, we publish that on the GitHub page but uh, we are going to publish more uh, indicators uh, in the near future yeah no that's uh, uh you know that's uh, that's great uh, that's great ali and um, and related to you know some of the indicator that uh, we were publishing right now so um assuming that i'm a i'm a customer and i want to uh use that so what i can do i can download it or in uh, in which format uh, what I can really do for for start to use some of these uh, you know content that we're publishing. Yeah, sure. They are uh, completely standalone first of all, and it is uh, extremely important because uh, that means that uh, the indicators can be used uh, from the community or uh, from the customers. So everyone can use uh, freely and uh, easily those indicators. In the product, uh, of course, uh, are uh, already inside the subscription, but uh, it is also possible to use them uh, completely standalone, so not binded uh, to any product uh, or, uh, or software. So I think yeah, this so is uh, the, the most important thing to say about. Uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, that, that's great as, uh, as we keep discussing about some of the, the challenge that we see. So um, that, you know, we just believe it's important to share it, but you know, let's try to work together. So for the for the people that are here in the webinar, for, first of all, feel free to ask any question, even now that we're talking, but in general, let's work together to make this intelligence that, that we see there available to everyone, um, uh, aside from from any any contract and, uh, and, and company, I think is important to share it. Um, so a question that I, that I have that um, I think is so, some of the people that I know, they ask me is uh, assuming that, you know, my you know the ceo the direction of the company force me that i'm one of the many professionals out there to basically open up a many connection to my critical infrastructure and uh, uh you know some of you were lucky to implement already a strategy and having a solution in place to some of others that they didn't um or you know some of the uh, partner out there are trying to help the customer to do something so but if you have to do something very quickly in order to you know increase the visibility and you don't have a solution in place what do you think chris uh you know a person can do in general to facing this challenge so um i think one of the first steps in general is to develop a good asset inventory um if you don't know what you have then you can't secure it and there's two things to hear first of all is being able to monitor what's in your environment as these remote access pieces come into play but also more future thinking, we have to know after um, we have gone through all this major change in our enterprise, how do we get back to a normal operational state again? So customers or organizations that already have an, an accurate asset inventory, they already know who's talking to what, how things are supposed to behave. I think they're gonna have a little bit easier journey to get back to a normal operational state than ones where they're trying to bolt on these things in a um, emergency type situation. And in some cases, in order to uh, in order to get themselves available again, they're having to sacrifice things like integrity or confidentiality and throwing a little bit of caution to the wind. And some projects are being shortcut. There are some check boxes that aren't being checked. Um, and I think that at the end of all this, we're going to have to get back to a normal state where we're back in compliance again. We're back in, um, you know, in good with our regulations that we're supposed to be following. And 
So I think the good first step is the asset inventory and being able to fully understand what equipment is there, what it looks like, if it's changed, yeah. how did it get that way? You know, those kinds of details I think are going to be very important, especially during the rollout of um, remote access. Yeah, and um, which tool I can use to do that? If tomorrow I, I want to start to get visibility, which I thought I totally agree, it's uh, it's uh, one of, one of the initial step, and uh, and even even eventually monitor a little bit more in detail some of the new remote connection landing on my plant. Uh, and so on. So we will discuss also more next week about how to really monitor and uh, and uh, you know these new remote assets. But um, uh, which tool I can use, Ale, for example, uh, in case I have to do that? Is there something in GitHub? Is there something that Nozomi did that that we can we can use? Yeah, sure. Basically, you you can uh, keep track of all your connection that are coming because uh, usually all the all the VPN endpoints uh, uh, push users uh, inside a network, uh, inside uh, an IP pool, let's say. So it's easy to keep track uh, of uh, that pool. But you can uh, also use uh, security tools uh, to detect uh, common scans inside the network uh, in case someone uh, penetrated the perimeter. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, steps uh, that can be followed to keep the, the connection safe. The, the network so one safe. of the things that I'm very uh, proud of, and I think uh, I think is something that uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I have also some friend that now are using it, and uh, you know, sometimes even in their home. So um, we we released the community edition. It's one of the many free tools that can be used out there. So and. Uh, and um, you know we are trying to make available in the community edition some of this intelligence that that we discover. So um, how is it possible to use Chris the community edition? Um, are you using also the community edition in some cases? <laughs> um, I know you you like to use a lot of tools. So um, what, how do you think we can use eventually the community edition for uh, uh, for helping and or for trying to get visibility or to start to have a quick monitoring about what's happening? Yes. Um, so I think first is to understand why it even exists in the first place. So if organizations, let's say, um, on the IT side or in a home, you might run a certain set of tools to do your asset inventory, like an NMAP scan or something in that nature. But on in certain environments, you can't do that. It's dangerous. Um, and especially in, in industrial control systems on OT, even IoT, um, it can be damaging to systems to generate that much traffic. So what you want to do is passively generate that asset inventory. And that's what Nozomi does. But, you know, it's a big solution with a lot of capabilities and the community edition provides the capability for someone to take it, plug it into their environment and safely, passively listen to that network traffic and then develop an asset inventory of the types of equipment that other products aren't able to understand. Most people that are developing products for IT don't get exposure to the critical infrastructure and the proprietary industrial controllers, the PLCs, RTUs, DCSs, all of those types of hardware that you'll find that's very specialized in those environments take a lot of investment on our part to understand them and work with those protocols and make an asset inventory that's actually valuable enough to use. So that's what our product specializes in and the community yeah. edition runs as a VM and allows someone to basically see everything and understand it all. Before that, customers would have had to use Excel spreadsheets to manually put these things together using a variety of sources. And now it's really automated and it sort of takes that into modern times, this automated asset inventory. Yeah, yeah, no, that's um, that's great. And um, um, Ale, I want to try to put you a little bit on a on a spot uh, now. In um, um, so we spend uh, we spend a good amount of time working on some cases where there was uh, uh, some 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 real attack happening, and and we try to to help some of our customer to to solve it. And uh, you know, in some cases, we have visibility about the the final you know. Let me say, um, not the very original source of the attack, but we start to get some intelligence around where the, some attackers are coming. 
and as we, as we know, right, you know, we can use very easily any masquerade techniques in order to try to masquerade when the attack is really coming. But um, I don't know if you want to share with us a little bit about, you know, in be active in the hacking community in the sense that we're monitoring what's happening in the hacking community. So do you think um, uh, we can share something about where this type of attack are coming? Is there a region that, are, you know, based on your experience is suffering more than another? It's very hard to tell. Share, share with us a little bit. And Chris also has something to say here. <laughs> now, before Ali starts, can we yeah. kick off a poll and perhaps people can answer the next poll question while Ali answers that? Fantastic. Go ahead, Ali. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I will uh, tell something. So, first of all, uh, let's say it is uh, really difficult to understand uh, the sources of the attacks, uh, but uh, it is uh, really important also to understand uh, where these kind of attacks uh, are going to hit. Let me give you an example about COVID-19. What we are saying, we saw that basically, of course, the attackers uh, were targeting most uh, the countries that are uh, suffering uh, the infection, the real infection of the virus. So we saw a lot of uh, phishings hitting uh, Italy, France, uh, and US. So it is really important to, to get this information because uh, you can uh, get advantage understanding and trying to understand in advance to predict where can be the most uh, um, most hidden uh, places, for example. So you can uh, take uh, immediate considerations. Uh, you can uh, enhance the security in some countries, especially for uh, the critical infrastructures like uh, like uh, the healthcare that uh, are really, really, really targeted in those months by threat actors. We saw attacks also in UK, in uh, US, uh, all around the world about uh, about uh, healthcare uh, facilities. And it is really dangerous because uh, the privacy is uh, is in danger of the patients, the the infrastructure itself. So it is really really important to predict where the the, the actors are going to attack and uh, keep. Uh, keep the, the, the security level high. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. And, uh, and um, I, think, uh, I think this is data that are very interesting, according to me. And I'm always, um, it will always very interesting to understand where, where an attack is coming from and what, what, who is behind that attack. And it is always a consideration that is, you know, in cybersecurity is, is something that requires a lot of effort, but it's always um, an interesting question to answer. I see uh, on top of the question that we ask, some of the people that are asking question uh, in uh, in the chat, and uh, uh, one question that I really like because you know I, I know we're doing some stuff there, but I'm curious to know your feedback is: um, Do you think that um, you know medical device and in general uh, you know the healthcare is? Uh, um, is uh, affected right now? Is there some real attack uh, on industrial plant uh, eventually that are you know working on, uh, on on this type of sector or they're you know part of the of the medical and health sector? So anything that we can share around that, I think uh, that would be very interesting. Yeah, sure. Uh, medical devices uh, in particular are uh, unfortunately really vulnerable because there are no um, precautions, no security level around. So in case an attacker can uh, can enter inside the perimeter of the facility, all these kind of devices are uh, mostly without uh, any security level. So it is really easy to access them, uh, use, uh, for example, uh, uh, default passwords to access the services, uh, to leave uh, malicious code inside. Uh, of course, it depends by the device. Uh, 
but uh, at the moment uh, it is really really important to protect this kind of networks so as you know and before I pass it to you chris um, um but as you know we are we we love to do responsible disclosure right so we are but but to go more in deep we are working in 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 trying to um, let me say uh make more secure some of the devices that are out there and uh and um so we we release uh stuff when when we're sure that you know that problem are fixed um but um again it's more spending time talking with people working in the healthcare um i can absolutely see that this is a thread is becoming more interesting uh first of all because you know many many uh, hospital and and um and a place like that they're just running in, in order to increase the equipment that they have, buy new equipment. Uh, you know, right now the it's not very important if that equipment did a very specific security testing. They're just buying new equipment. If it's possible, they would like to monitor the new equipment um, completely centrally. Um, I, as, as many of you, I'm originally from Italy, and um, um, there was a, a very famous campaign um, um, that uh, uh, raised a uh, lots of money. And in uh, in two weeks they were able to build uh, you know an, an entire uh, let me say little hospital uh, able, uh, able to happy uh, up to 100 people. They put a lot of new uh, medical devices. Everything is connected. I you know my friend is working there now, as I said, and uh, um, everything is connected in a control room. And so there is a lot of connection that he he was not uh, used to that in the past in any hospital that he worked. <laughs> And uh, and of course, you know, uh, right now the main topic that we have, uh, that they have, is not, you know, to try to find uh, if that device are 100% secure, but they are trying to save lives, right? And that's why also we are working very hard in in, in Zomi and uh, for you know try to help also that sector. And to go back to the question, my you know quick final answer is absolutely yes. I think now more than ever. You know, this is a sector that is getting attention not only from good people but also from bad people. So, and uh, we we need to try to do more there uh, in order to make sure that uh, we we protect better that devices. Yeah, sure. Absolutely agree. And there's there's a rush through manufacturing. People are trying. There's a variety of people. Who would have thought GM was going to make ventilators and Ford and automobile companies and you know, if the hospital isn't able to remotely uh, monitor these devices, do you know what they're doing? They're leaving the patients in the room and then they put all the devices out in the hallway and close the door. And they walk up and down the hallways and they monitor them in the hallway and keep the machines outside of the patient's room. That's not optimal. That's a very difficult for them to do. So they prefer to take these machines all practically straight out of design. It, it passed through a factory briefly while it was made and it's being connected up. Nobody's tested these or um, really gone through any typical process to make sure that they're secure or hardened or monitored or known about or anything. So yeah, I would I I feel for the guys that are challenged right now with keeping the networks secure while this myriad of different devices are just literally being tossed at the network and attached up at a dizzying pace. It's um a lot of change happening and with change comes opportunity unfortunately for uh, bad things to not only happen from mistakes but also opportunities for bad actors yeah yeah 100 percent um so i um i see a, another question that i think we tackle a little bit and uh happy to take the the first uh, the first answer here i, I see georg uh, hopefully pronouncing correctly his name, he's asking if we have the experience of real attack happening in the last three, four weeks to plant. Um, so, and uh, my answer is uh, unfortunately, absolutely yes. Uh, so it's, um, it's, um, it's happening. And, uh, you know, I spent my last two weekends, uh, you know, helping uh, to solve some, some problems and some needs came out from what's happening right now in, in the world and, and some of the threat that there is out there. Uh, some some big customer uh, that that we have, so is uh, yeah absolutely unfortunately absolutely yes we have more evidence now than uh, than, than than before right C considering the short amount of uh, of time that uh, uh, you know that that we we are observing now since the coronavirus came in our life so uh, yeah absolutely yes but Ali and 
Chris, what do you think about that, right? Did, did you have an experience? Are you talking with some of our customers that are facing some of these problems for real, some of these attacks? Yeah, they are suffering attacks uh, not related, let's say, with uh, COVID-19 uh, targeting something uh, in the industrial, but yes, they are uh, suffering attacks. Let's say COVID-19 uh, are most uh, using ransomware, uh, uh, info stealer Trojan to access the systems of the customers uh, of the, the, the normal people. Uh, at the moment, uh, not targeting uh, industrial uh, plants with custom malwares around uh, the topic, the COVID-19. And, and that's for the custom custom malware, right? I mean, in my experience, uh, you know, this weekend was uh, that as you know someone used to you know some 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 of this custom malware to get access to to you know some of the critical faci facilities in the plant and then uh, you know from there uh, yeah so there was uh, other stuff happening and uh, um, not in measure so the company has a deep visibility uh on what was doing but um but also yeah that's as part of uh of what we saw yeah and i would also add that there's going to be a few different types of companies out there there's going to be the ones that can say yes to that question and say yes we know we've been attacked and then there's going to be companies or organizations that say either no or i don't know and those other two categories worry me a little bit more than the ones that actually know um if you know you're being attacked you're cognizant of it and you're going to take preparations and remediate properly but it's the folks that are locked at home right now away remote and aren't able to go in and look at things normally they don't know right now and they might not be down today because of something that the hacker did but they could be down next month or six months from now they could be realizing the repercussions of what happened today so i think yeah. it's the folks that don't know are in a trickier position than the ones that do yeah, and uh, staying on this topic, Chris, um, Georg is uh, is, um, is asking, um, you know, say on this topic, is if we have any evidence that our solution in specific help the customer to discover or protect their infrastructure around uh, some of this new threat. Um, the one that I mentioned on the last weekend, Georg in specific, that I was deeply involved. Uh, yes, I mean, the, the problem was detected by our solution um, it, itself. Um, but but uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's uh, the answer is absolutely yes, uh, and um, and uh, again, what what we're trying to do is also share some of this knowledge uh, to make sure that uh, you know aside from Nozomi, everyone is trying to do something in the same direction to gain visibility. Um, another challenge that I can share is um, um, in a, in, a, in an energy company, for example. Um, so they they had uh, around 10% of their plant reachable remotely, uh, you know, from a considerable number of people. Of course, there was all, always an exception in case of, emer of emergency. But let me say, in the day by day, only a small amount of the main plant were accessible remotely. And in the, in basically right away after the government decided to do a shutdown uh, in in different country on the world, they are basically in, in 52 places in the world. Um, so they they have to make available right away some some connection to people that they never had the possibility to connect remotely, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and unfortunately through that I mean they have to do that from from you know the, even into the morning in order to make sure that the energy was reaching every single home, and uh, and they face problem they face some some problem and. Uh, you know, I don't want to say that it was a campaign targeting them. Absolutely not. But they open up. They open up, and they have now more than 60% of the plant reachable on the day by day by people staying at home. And and we were there in that case. So this is something that we have the visibility. And yes, so we absolutely discover very important stuff that I glad that we still discover and we work them with them. You know, uh, next to them in order to try to make sure that um, that is not going to happen again um so so yeah that's is, is our our visibility that we have what an amazing feat though for these companies right to go from 10 percent to 60 percent remote access in a short period of time in a project that typically takes years yeah i mean these guys are working like mad right now and um i'm really glad that we're doing something to help people and be successful with um with all these endeavors 
Yeah, um, one hundred percent. I see uh, um, um, uh, another practical question coming. A few practical questions. One is, uh, you guys spoke about the community edition. Um, where I can download the community edition? Um, so um, you know, very easily you can go to the community dot and uh, and you know there you can download the community edition. It's very easy. You don't need to be directly in contact with us. There will be a procedure very simple. You can get a license, use it, uh, you know, as much as you can in order to try to, you know, work uh, in, in, in these new challenges. And the other one is, uh, you know, some of the people are asking, are we going to share, you know, some of the results of the question that uh, you, Chris, just, uh, just launched inside the webinar, some of the poll. Are we doing that today? Are we doing that next week? Um, our plan was to share today, but I think we have some go to webinar issues today. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with some interesting conclusions from that and share it on our next webinar. I think because uh, I don't think we're going to get the results now um, that I can see. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's great. And I think we. Oh, um, I got them. Amazing. Here we go. Okay, Fantastic. So, yeah, let's do it really quick. So. What type of, can everyone see the results or is it just us? Um, Maybe if you can read briefly. the results, please, uh, sure. because for people that are not seeing that, to see, repeat the question and read the results, that would be fantastic. Yes. Absolutely. So what type of COVID-19 threats have you seen? And 94% of the people say that uh, they've seen some general phishing attacks. The next is 28% have seen some ransomware attacks. 19% have seen highly targeted spear phishing attacks. 9% have seen advanced persistent threats, and 3% have seen other. So that just goes to show you that the folks on this webinar are seeing exactly the type of stuff that Ali was highlighting there, which is the phishing attacks that aren't super targeted yet, but taking advantage of the fear of the topic in order to get people to open up emails, sort of going for the easiest, weakest link in the, in the security chain there. That's uh, very interesting that 94% um, of our people are seeing um, phishing, though. Yeah, yeah. Shall I we move to the... We are saying more or less, uh, more or less the same things uh, in, the, in the, yeah, as you mentioned, in the community. So we start to see some targeting attack, but it's, it's lower. But we, we need to keep up. And uh, my feeling, I don't have any data, but, uh, you know, being in, in cybersecurity for all my life, I think, we may unfortunately see an increasing of the attack that are more targeted. It's just a matter of time. Um, Absolutely. So, you know, that's why it doesn't matter if you don't use Nozomi or, or so on, just, you know, the load our, you know, uh, intelligence, um, uh, our open stuff that we put it there. Uh, we also have a GitHub page so that we keep maintaining just to help the community uh, use that, you know, consume that with other tools. We don't care, but let's try to, you know, work together to, uh, you know, reduce the risk here. So uh, that would be would be very very important. So um, I think we we are almost uh, you know running out of time here. So I just want to uh, let you say something if you want to conclude, guys. But on my side, it was a pleasure to have this discussion, and uh, I'm really looking forward to work more with some of you uh, out there on the field. Uh, in, in the page that we just published today is going to be a page that there will be the link on GitHub, links for the load, all the contents. Everything is for free. It's for everyone. And um, and uh, let's work together. If you see something, you know, let's uh, let's keep working together. And and right now for his is connected live, and uh, and he's not just listening the audio. You can see the link here about the web page and uh, all the different tools uh, that we have. But uh, let's work together, and uh, if you see something, please feel free to contact us. In this page, we're going to publish a dedicated uh, email address where you can be in touch with us, uh, give us a call, and uh, and uh, you know let's participate together. And in in the future, we will be more than happy to have some guests, you know, participating with us. Um, so if you are interested to be part of our discussion next time, um, we would like every time to to focus on a topic and help in the community. But uh, happy to you know to to do this discussion with more of you. So please write to us and uh, let's stay in touch. Chris, Ale, anything thank you, you all very add? much for your time. I just wanted to thank everyone for their time and stay safe, stay clean, and um, stay calm.
Yeah, I just want to add that uh, our side, we will continue in the next days uh, to add uh, contents for the community, new indicators, uh, uh, news, uh, everything. Yeah, and thank you, thank you for your for your help. Uh, you know, some of the work that you see here is already done by w working together. It's uh, it's uh, it's just um, a common effort uh, that we're publishing. But thank you so much for for the for the help and what what you're doing. Thank you. See you soon. See you. Bye. Bye everyone.